What up? Okay, we live. It's that power move, Warrior Wednesdays. Movers, what up? Let me stop shaking this table. Who we got? Lady Logistics, this early? Oh my God, Tristan, what up, girl? What up, my movers? I see everybody jumping in early. This making me feel good. This power movement is real, y'all. What up? Who we got? Who we got in the building? My man Christian, what up? Joe Paul, I see you, brother. Y'all must be enjoying these Wednesday nights as much as I am. I see, I, I see everybody coming on early. I love it. I love it. It's 2021, y'all. It's going to be a beautiful year. This is the year to move us. It's Warrior Wednesdays. I'm excited. It's off, it, it, this is the first. This is the first Wednesday night. So we really like we started off right, y'all. Everybody up in here early. Is that my girl Chanel? PR Chanel, what up? Anybody looking for a publicist? Reach out to my girl. Her handle is PR, PR Chanel, I believe. Chanel, I see you. If anybody looking for a publicist, deep, deep, deep contacts in the industry. Go see her. Dakota, what up? I see you just joined in. Dakota, what up, brother? Happy New Year. It's beautiful. We here bright and early. I love it. It's that Warrior Wednesdays. This is what we do. 7 p.m. Wednesdays. This is open. I'm hoping and praying y'all came to the table and, you know, y'all got questions this week. Y'all got stories to share. This is about y'all. It ain't about showing prayers. This is an open forum. It's a safe place for movers. Every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Monday nights is Monday night motivation. I hope y'all got a chance to check out my boys from the Black Wealth Renaissance. Incredible interview we dropped this week. Every day we've been putting out segments. I love what these young brothers are doing. They got this incredible movement going on where they're shining a spotlight on, on black entrepreneurs. And, it, you know, it, it just makes my heart feel good to see the next generation really killing it the way that they're doing. So shout out to my man, um, Jalen and Dave over at Black Wealth Renaissance. Go support them. Follow them. Who else we got here? And just keep in mind, guys, I might not know all of y'all handles. TC Unleashed. Troy, what up? Jumping in the building. I see you. Uh, is, what does that say? Radically Curly? Not sure who that is, but welcome to the Warrior Wednesdays. This is that Warrior Mentality Wednesdays. I got my man's shirt on. We stay in focus for him. This is Warrior Wednesdays. Power Move Hour is what we do. JD, I see you just jumped in the building, brother. Glad to have my man Jermaine Dupree back in the building. I love it. It's movers supporting movers. All of the movers out there. Tell a friend to tell a friend. This is our community. This is where we come to be inspired. It's where we come to be motivated. It's where we come to learn from one another. Support one another. Credible things happening in this community. And I love it. I love the way it's growing. I love the way each one is teaching one. Because I truly in my heart believe we can't do this on our own. It's always about relationships. It takes a village, literally, and we are our own village. So again, you know, let's continue supporting one another, y'all. Who else I see? I'm going to give it like another minute or so and we're going to get started. If you're trying to jump in, please go ahead and hit that request line. And I'm going to let y'all into the chat. I'm going to start in one minute. Just let more people in for a second and, and we get started again. Tell a friend to tell a friend. If you're a mover, if you know like-minded movers every Wednesday night, 
Come to this Power Move Maker Hour with a warrior mentality. We here for one another. Let me see who's waiting to get in. See who we got in the, in the building tonight. Who we got? Yo. <laughs> what up? You looking like money. What up, JD? What's happening? What up, brother? What's going on? It's good. You, 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 let, me, let me see. Let me get right. I know you've been trying to get me on here for a minute, but yeah. What's happening? What up, brother? Like, 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 you know, it's crazy. I got my man Jermaine Dupree in the building. And JD was like, yo, I'm there, but I really want to come and I want to inspire and I want to motivate. And I said, that's exactly what we've been doing. And you've been sticking your head in this thing every week. So thanks for being a man of your word, JD. Yeah, 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 for sure. So what's happening? What's, what's what we talking about tonight? What's going on? I mean, I know it's all moving and shaking, and you know, it's a lot of moving and shaking going on today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nah, but you know, just just to keep it real, like we know what's going on in this country. We know what's going on in in, in the world. Um, DC is bananas. Shout out to, to your hometown, to your backyard, y'all flip Georgia. The Senate is now part of the Dem is is now Democratic. So shout to all the work you and all of, of of the people down in Georgia, like really showing that we can make a difference. All we gotta do is go out there and let our voice be heard. But I was telling you, JD, when I'm building here, it's a community of like-minded individuals, it's movers. It's people who, you know, have humble beginnings just like you, but they working hard, whether it's trying to move up at the job or trying to create their own. It's a lot of entrepreneurs in here. So anything you can say just to encourage them, it'll be, it'll be highly, highly accepted by the people in this live tonight. I mean, well, I was talking about this earlier because, you know, um, my, my, my man, Ecstasy from Houdini just passed away and, um, and, um, that's pretty much where I got my start. And I was talking about this on this walk that I do every day about like, just letting people know, like when I first started, I was 12, 13, 12, 13, 14 years old. And that's when I met these guys. And I went on tour with them on the Fresh Fest and people, for some reason, people have this, this, this fucked up mindset about Jermaine Dupree that I've, that I've always had, you know what I mean? That I've always had. And I, and I, and I, and, and I came from having, and I just happened to, you know, pop in the, in, the, in, the, in the midst of having. But when I was 12, 13, 14 years old, I didn't have shit, basically. You know what I mean? And I went on tour for three years and didn't get paid at all. I didn't get paid nothing. Um, I, I was just on the road with people who, who was having. Run DMC, Houdini, Grandmaster Flash, Curtis Blow, The Fat Boys, um, Rest in Peace, Shabadoo. Uh, in Turbo, I met them the, the following year in '84. Um, but I, I got an opportunity to just be. Um, I got paid experience. That's what I got paid. I got paid experience. And a lot of times, I don't hear none of these younger people having this type of story anymore. And um, I feel like if you if you love what you do, you will get paid. It's no date to when you get paid. But you will get paid at some point if you love what it is that you do. And if what you do takes you many places besides where you ever thought you would go, but you don't see money with it, um, you have to ask yourself how much you love what it is that you do. And is this something that you really, really um, And And I know a lot of us, a lot of times you can't. A lot of times, uh, you know, it's, life is is a little tough. A lot of people can't do that and just can't just like up and be like not working and get no money. But um, you have to sacrifice something, right? You got to sacrifice something. And I, and I, I just feel like if I were to say anything to anybody out there younger um, that's trying to do this at any kind of pace or any way that I've been, uh, even with you, um, I would tell them like, you know, um, prepare yourself for sacrifice. Um, Cause, cause it's people like myself that look at people sacrificing, and we take care of them. We make sure that they 
because we see that sacrifice. And we'll, yep. we'll, I'll take care of a person that's sacrificing itself for me faster than I take care of somebody that's probably working for me. Because I, I see their hunger and I see exactly, I say, oh, he wanted, he wanted worse than you. I'm paying you. He, this, this nigga really wanted. Like, don't worry about it, dog. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's probably a million other people out there, CEOs and, and, and people that, that will do the same thing in any other type of business. Um, I also want to say that, you know, in this business that we that we are in, music business, let's 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 start trying to explore other jobs. Cause I don't see a lot of ANRs, I don't see a lot of, you know, I don't see a lot of people doing other shit besides saying they in the studio and they making beats and they trying to do the exact same thing I'm doing. Woo! Um we need we need we it's a lot of other jobs out there and a lot of other checks out there that's just sitting over here waiting for somebody to come get them. Cause don't nobody want to do it. Everybody want to do the same job. There's some big checks out there too that niggas can go get if they was willing to do other jobs. That's my little two cent. You know, I, I I love you. You you just touched on some dope points. And one of the things that you said was you started this early, and you was doing it, and it was based on love, and you was putting in the work. You was getting your reps up and it wasn't about a check and it's one of the things that i preach to this community all the time you got to be willing to sacrifice a check now just to get in the door and learn your craft so i'm so happy that you even started out that way because too often people think that opportunity is attached to a dollar right they, they're like, I can't see myself interning or I can't see myself working one minute past whatever that man is paying me. And they don't understand mm. you don't grow. If, if all you think about is I have to be paid for my time, you said it yourself. And, and yes, it's easy to look at you now with those fly shades on and you got the crispy ball <laughs> head going and you looking like a man. It's easy to look at you after so many years of success and thinking you always had it this way. And you didn't. You came in, you 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 was humble, but also something that you said that really stuck out, and I and I and I tell this community this all the time, you ain't never too young or too old to be a power move maker. You would you say you started at thirteen years old on the road? Twelve. Can you hear me? Twelve. Twelve. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Twelve years old. I was on tour. I went on tour with Houdini at twelve, and I mean I keep saying Houdini, but it was the Fresh Fest. It was the New York City Fresh Fest. Run DMC was the headliner. Houdini was there, um, and honestly, I didn't even know what I was getting myself into. Right, I didn't know what that tour was because that was the beginning of hip hop going on tour. This was just, <laughs> hip hop wasn't a thing that was going on tour. So, and I'm from Atlanta, so I wasn't privy to hip hop the way you guys in New York and other places was. We was like the last to get it, and we was the last to be taken serious about it. Right, so um, the mindset about it was just like, what is this thing? They having a show? I'm gonna go dance at this show. That was the idea of it and you know once I got in there and I seen I'm like all these people like 18,000 people in, in a place and I'm dancing in front of these people and then the people like Jermaine we want you to we want you to do this every night for the next 50 cities and you know um that's cultural currency you know what I mean that's what that is that's cultural currency because I'm like I don't even I'm not as soon as I heard it I wasn't thinking about money and you know like some people might say, Jermaine, at that point, you, you should have made a deal or whatever, whatever. But I wasn't in a position to make a deal. All I was doing was dancing. And I, I had no, you know, I had no muscle in the thing. I just was like, I was good at what I did and I loved what I did, right? So if you wasn't going to bother me and you was going to allow me to keep doing what I was doing, I was going to do it, right? And I, and, I, and I took that, something about me at that point made me be friends with all of these people, Houdini, mm -hmm. Red DMC. It made me really stop being like they little homie, kicking it with them. And I, and I never did it 
like, yo, I need to do this. It just happened. My body just swayed like that. And it just became a thing where I became like neutral to a lot of people that don't really understand my connection to New York being that I'm from Atlanta. Right? A lot of a lot of niggas could always be like, JD, you I remember I think TI said this the other day, like I kind of I I I I'm a different type of Atlanta artist because I I kind of was like making ways with New York artists, right? And it wasn't it wasn't because it was not because I uh, designed it like that. It was just what happened in my life as a dancer. I went on tour with all of these the New York City Fresh Fest. That's what it was called. So yes, in eighty three, eighty four, I met my man Chad Elliott. And um, Chad Elliott introduced me to Brooklyn. I moved to Brooklyn and stayed with him on Eastern Parkway. Um, and yeah, I started learning hip hop from the mecca of where hip hop came from, where, where I was seeing that it was coming from. So yeah, I was fed, spoon fed this um, from the actual mecca. So my cloth, yeah, so a lot of people, talk, my cloth is a lot different than the majority of a lot of the artists that come from the South because I was fed directly from these guys that birthed this and these guys that was doing it, right? Like, when you get taught how to DJ by Jam Master J, that shit hit different. It's a, just a, it's a, it's a different, you know what I mean? It just hit different, you know what I mean? Like, Grandmaster, Jam Master J, rest in peace, Grandmaster D taught me, um, you know, all of these guys, they just was, I was just like a sponge and I happened to, and, and God put me in this place to be around these people, right? They just put me in this space. But um, I say like, like if you, if you have an opportunity to get an experience like that, money should not even be something that's at the top of your list, man. It's like that experience in itself um, and experiences, period. If you get an experience to work with somebody that's, that we call a goat in this industry today, or you get an ex you get a chance to work alongside somebody that you've heard about, blah blah blah. Man, you should just go, just go. Um, if you can, if they if they can help you get there, you need a ride or whatever it is, just go, just get there. And um, of course, yeah, of course, we all think about money and all of that, but at the same time, just go, just get there because the experience, even if you got paid, you still wouldn't be able to afford that experience. <laughs> you couldn't buy that education. You could Dang. not buy that education. Nah. And you know, and, and I thank you for your time. And I told you I wouldn't hold you all night, but it's a couple of points that you raised before I let you go. Movers, for all of y'all right now who are in this live, listen very carefully to this man. He got in the door on the ground floor. No ego attached. He was a dancer. Yeah, From there, like literally a dancer, doing whatever. You did your thing. You were great at what you did. And they tell you, look, we want to keep you on tour. And you do this every single night. And you got 50-something dates that came to you because of that. And through that, you start developing relationships with some of the most iconic people in hip-hop. But if you just didn't humble yourself from the gate or you was looking for a check, that opportunity would have never, ever came. And in your career, what I love about you is you've done so many different things. Dancer, legendary producer, label owner, uh, DJ, like your accolades go songwriter. I mean, I can sit here all, but it started from you coming in the door, being willing to sweep the floors, clean the toilets, do whatever it took. So my, my last point, and if you could just tell somebody on your way out of here, there's somebody sitting here and they're listening to you. And they're probably working a nine to five. They're probably doing something that they really don't want to do with their life, but they're too scared to make a pivot. They, 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 maybe they think they're even too old to make a pivot. And that's why I was saying all of the different things that you did. But anybody who is sitting there and they know they got this brilliant business idea, but they're too scared to just bet on themselves, what advice can you give them before you break out? 
Um, I would say you gotta you gotta give yourself you have to give yourself the opportunity. Um, because one thing that happened with my career is that yes, I went on tour when I was 12, 13, 14. Um, and then during 15 and 16 is when I started seeing my neighbor, my friends in my neighborhood getting jobs, right? And I had and I had this friend that started working at McDonald's. And I remember one night. He, you know, he used to give me free McDonald's shit. I'm probably, you know what I mean? Like, but he, one night I came up there and he was cleaning the McDonald's truck, right? And not to look down on anybody that has a job, but he, this was his job. And he was 16 years old. He was 16. I was 14. And or I might have been 15. I mean, 14 going to 15, whatever. I still wasn't 16 yet. And I knew that when you turn 16, that's when, you know, here in Atlanta, you can get your driver's license. And if you get your driver's license nine times out of ten, that's when your parents start talking this job shit and you got to get a job, right? So at 15, I was thinking like, okay, listen, Jermaine, and you got to have these conversations with yourself. I told myself, I said, listen, the one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to be doing that. And by the way, I came off tour and had to had to come back to a reality that like, this shit is, that's over with, Jermaine. The tour is over. You toured for three years. You met people good. Now what you going to do? Right now, what are you going to do? I learned all this stuff from people. I had all these relationships and all of this. But I had to face this reality that still, I wasn't famous. Nobody knew me. It was just, you know, I had an opportunity. I got an opportunity to do it. And I had this conversation with myself that, you know, I, I, I got to push myself so that I don't have to have that job. I got to do something. And then I had to start looking at, if I was to get a job, what jobs would I get that would suffice what I felt in my heart? So I also want to say that one thing I think that people don't do is they never, they, 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 they just give up completely. You don't have to give up on your dream completely. You could do something that's surrounded around your dream and still, Oh, oh yeah. But people wanna, people wanna, um, they wanna jump right to their dream so bad. But you can do things that surround you around your dream and put it, put you a little bit closer, and just so you can continue to get. In my mind, that's what I was. Maybe I'll work at a music store, or maybe I'll do something at a studio, right? And that's the intern thing that you're talking about. But I was yep. too young. I was too young to actually know that that's what that is. I grew older I, to learn that's an internship. So, yeah, never be scared of an internship because the internship puts you directly next to what you want to be a part of. It puts you directly, it doesn't, it doesn't put you in it, but it puts you directly to it. I know, like, I, I, I've talked to kids that used to play, that was ball boys at, at the Hawks games or ball boys at, at Laker games, right? And, and being a ball boy introduced them to Magic Johnson. And Magic Johnson started remembering this ball boy from back when he was playing. And when Magic got on, got on like that, he gave this nigga a job. Like, yo, I seen how, you know, how, how, how uh, serious you was about this and how much love you have for the game and how many years you stayed in. I'm going to give you a real job. And who's to say, I don't know that's what he wanted, but I'm just saying that's usually how this stuff turns out. And um, same thing for Ludacris. Ludacris worked at Hot 107.9 in Atlanta as a DJ. Yeah. And and he wanted to make music. And I, I'm only bringing this story up because he wanted me to sign him. Because he kept saying he looked like the so-so deaf man. So I had multiple conversations with him. But I always I, I always looked at Luda at the time was like, oh, you the radio dude. I, didn't, I wasn't paying no attention to him as an artist, right? So then... What Luda did was he convinced the radio station to let him start making jingles, right? So he could rap on like commercials that you hear on the radio. I started hearing this and I was like, who is this? And then it was like, that's me, right? So then I got an opportunity and it was so like um, characteristic, like it was very much like outgoing, very loud rapper the way Ludacris came out. And I got a chance to do 
the the music from Madden 2000. This was before they started putting music in, in, in video games. So they put they they wanted to have a, a rap intro for Madden 2000, and I did the beat. And they was like, we want we want an animated rapper. We want somebody animated that's like Busta Rhymes, but we want a new artist. And I was like, damn, animated and new. And then I start thinking, ludicrous. I heard his voice on the radio. He's animated. This shit sounds right, right? This guy was working at the radio station. I gave him an opportunity to be on Madden 2000. This is before he came out as a rapper that y'all heard. And um, like I said, I, I didn't sign him from that, but I gave him that opportunity. And that's all I'm saying is like, take a job. If it doesn't give it to you immediately, take a job that gets you right there. Because it'll put you right there. And all you got to do is just wait for that second door for it to open. And, and, and that's really what it comes down to. For, for all of the movers who are on the live right now, you got to get in the building by any means necessary. It is so necessary. I don't care at what level you get in the building. You can get in the lowest person on the totem pole. But if you can be that fly on the wall, if you can just be next to the decision makers or somebody that may be one day in the elevator, hey, my name is such and such. You might not know me, but I have an idea. It could change your life, but you got to humble yourself. And like JD said, maybe it's not initially doing what you want to do, but yeah. find a way to get in the building so you are close to the yeah, thing you that you want to do. You got to get there. Got to get there. Word. Jermaine, I appreciate you, brother. My brother, my brother. Everybody Thank you so there. much. Happy New Year and all that, man. Happy New Year and congratulations again to what y'all did down there in Georgia today. So it's, it's amazing, man. We, we, we need it. Thank you. Continue uh, success and blessings. You too, my brother. Uh, my man, one. Shout to my man Jermaine Dupree, long time, long time friend and supporter, always been a stand up gentleman, always been a major supporter. So, shout, shout out to Jermaine Dupree. For anybody who's in this live right now, every Monday night, we are on 7 p.m. for Monday Night Motivation. Every Wednesday night, we open this up to a community of movers. If you are somebody who's out there who's making moves, you're an entrepreneur at heart, maybe you're taking that first step to go out there and get your LLC or get yourself incorporated, you need to be in this building. There is a ton of like-minded individuals in this live right now. Ask any question you have. If I can't answer it, it's somebody in this live right now who can answer your questions. This is the time where you come in. This is a safe place. Ask any question under the sun is for you. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., it's a power move, maker hour, a.k.a., and I need you to come in with that warrior mentality. Let me see who else is in. Hit the request if you're trying to jump in this live. This live on Wednesday night, again, it's about y'all. It's not about Sean Price. Let's see. Let's see who we got in this live, y'all. Don't be afraid. This is like, like movers, step up. Do not be afraid to request to get in this live. So, what up? It's super dark. Where who um, you I are? Have a where question. people are can see you? Um, how do you um get albums out to people, what, and music wise? Because I've been making music for the past couple of weeks. Okay, so it's it's extremely dark. Is there a way if 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 um you can log back on and I'll let you back on? Okay, let me see. We 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 can't see you. I'm sorry. Uh, I got terrible light. So why why don't you why don't you jump yeah. back on when you get next to a, a better light? Okay. Uh, this is as good as it gets in the house. Okay, because it's very difficult for us, and I want everybody to be able to see you, not just hear you. So, so I know. log back on, I get and, it. and I'll let you back into the conversation. I'm not sure who that was, but whoever it was, just log back on. Let's see who else we got waiting to get in.
Hey. Hey, who we got? My name is Shanette. I am the owner of Ariel's Candle Shop. Shanette, what up, girl? Hello. So uh, I guess I can uh, give some background on what I do. Um, I make hand poured scented candles, wax melts, and I just newly introduced some room sprays this year. Um, I got into making candles last year. I was always into scenting candles. And when the pandemic hit, actually I was buying more candles uh, than needed. And it got to the point where, you know, I was like critiquing the candles and complaining about it. And then my husband gave me the idea, like, you know, you're always complaining that you don't smell nothing. You're, uh, you're spending a lot of money on these candles. Why don't you make them yourself? So that's when I got into, you know, making my own candles. I actually took a course for it. And then I officially launched my business in July of last year. July 2020? Yes. So literally during the pandemic, you actually launched this business. Yes, I did. So today Congratulations, Jeanette. Congratulations. That's what I'm talking about. That's what movers do. Thank you very much. Um, speaking of my business, I actually have two questions for you. So the first question that I have is, you know, social media is a big platform. You know, everybody's on it from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, outside of social media, um, what tactics would you recommend um, to get my brand more out there, more brand recognition? Outside of social media? Yep. Okay, so before I even answer that again, what's the name of your candle company? Ariel's Candle Shop. So it's named after my middle name. Ariel's Candle Shop. What's different about your candles than any of the other candles out there? Uh, I consider mine highly scented. Uh, I know a lot of people say theirs are highly scented, but... Um, I can stand by that a lot. You know, I, mine are soy candles, hand poured. We can't hear you. Your sound went out. Okay, sorry. I'm getting close. Okay. close. Um, it's a, I hand pour them myself. Uh, they're highly scented. And... Getting phone calls in between here, so here you go. Take your time, you turn that off. Because you're asking a great question. Okay. Okay. Can you, can you see me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, pretty much I would stand by my brand by saying that it's highly scented. Um, I hand pour them myself and, um, you know, and I handcraft all of my wax smells by myself as well. Okay. So you're saying outside of social media, how can you get your candles out there? How can you get people to know about it? One of the tactics that I think will be, you know, and this is off the top of my head. When, when, when I was younger, my mom, she used to sell Avon. Okay. And I always loved their, their business strategy because she would do these Avon parties at the house. And she would invite her girlfriends there and she would allow all of her girlfriends to try on, you know, the perfumes and the soaps and all the different things that Avon had to offer. And I think even in the world of COVID, if you set up smaller parties, you know, smaller candle parties, because candles are really, really big. And I think that what is, what's going to separate you, and that's why I asked you, like, what's different about your brand than any of the other candle makers out there? If you say that they're highly scented, people need to experience that. Okay. So if you really set up these, these candle-like parties where you invite your girlfriends or maybe you make it a couple's thing and you put out hors d'oeuvres and you have cheese and crackers and you have wines and, you know, you really have an opportunity for, um, to present your candles because as people are there, the candles, you know, the aroma is, is, is filling the air so people will be able to experience it without you even talking about it. But somewhere through the night, if you are able to go over and just let people know, okay, what you've been smelling is my such and such brand of candle or, or such and such scent of, of the candle and educate people on what um, on your brand, I think you can make a lot of sales because I come from the, the, the world of grassroots marketing. And I truly in my heart believe there is no better marketing on planet Earth than word of mouth. So if you can get people to experience your camera, I mean, your candles in, in a very relaxed setting, 
they'll go out and they'll tell their friends and they'll buy from you. And when people come to their house, yeah. they'll do the, um, you know, the people will be like, yeah, what candles are that? And then they can recommend them to you. And then I brought up the Avon model as well because it may work to your benefit to get other people to work on your behalf and do these candle part. These call them a candlelit party, a candlelit uh, party, and and they can now work on consignment through you. So you can teach them and you can tell them all of the different things that separate your candles from everybody else's candles. So now you have all of your girlfriends and your friends and everybody else across the country who are having these little intimate parties. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, it's the wines, it's, it's, it's um, the, the light hors d'oeuvre, the cheese and crackers, the olives, all of that good stuff. And they can be educate people on your brand. So I think that that's a really effective way outside of social media. Because I truly believe with something like a candle, people need to experience it. People need to smell it. They need to, to, to really be, oh, this is great. Like, I, I've never smelt anything like this. And the candle burns so slow. That That's all of those different points are, are things you need to sell. But if people experienced it firsthand, it would give you an edge. Okay. That's mm -hmm. actually great. Um, that actually leads into my second question because I have done a few pop-up shops uh, the end of last year, especially for the holiday time, just mm -hmm. came out there a little bit more. Um, as you know, like with entrepreneurs, we have to take a lot of risks. So uh, what would you say, considering the stage that I'm in right now, six months in, like some factors that I should look into when taking like more in? Well, you know, you, the fact that you started this business in July of 2020, that was a risk by itself. It was amazing. So kudos to you. But I, I, I believe you're going to have, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. You have to invest in yourself. It's as simple as that. So in terms of risk, you're always going to be taking risks. And, and what I mean by that, it's not always monetary, right? It, it might be in terms of your marketing and the look and the feel and what you're putting out there to the, to, to the world. Maybe, in, you know, because risk comes in, 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 in different shapes and sizes. So maybe you, you on one uh, image is, is the candle itself, and that's what you're pushing out there. If you start to get more traffic, you say, let me go and showcase the, the, the actual candles, the glass, itself a little bit more but maybe you know you got a dope um you said it's ariel is yeah. is the name of it? candle shop yep yeah like or, or or maybe you start pushing the actual logo a ariel's candle shop pushing that a little more but as an entrepreneur i can tell you this you cannot be afraid to take an l you you just can't you have to be willing to put yourself out there and take risks even at the at, at, at the expense of falling on your face. So I like the fact that you said you've done pop-up shops. I'm not sure how well it, um, that they've done for you, but even if one person came and bought, even if just it was your friends and family who came and bought, that was a risk by itself because it costs money to put, to put together a pop-up shop. So, but you have to keep on, and honestly, I would be doing some, like right now, just to be honest, you should not have weekends. Every weekend, you should either be doing these candlelight dinners, these candlelight parties that we talked about, a pop-up shop. I know you're, you, you, you're married and you have your husband. Like Maybe it's something you guys can be doing together. But in order to grow this business, nights and weekends now belong to Ariel's candle shop okay. it doesn't it don't belong to you two anymore so so understand like and i'm assuming you have a full-time job correct yes I, i'll leave you on this your full-time job i know that now it pays your bills but you have to switch the way you think about your full-time job your full-time job is now your side hustle ariel's candle shop is your real business. So when you get off of work at five, 
from 5 to 11 p.m., 5 to 1 a.m., whatever yeah. that is, is when you go to work. On the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, if you're not in church on Sunday, Saturday should be dedicated to your full-time job, which is Ariel's Candle Shop. So just, I think where, where so many upstart entrepreneurs make a huge mistake is they look at their, their business as their side hustle. And right. that's so wrong. Yes, that, that thing that pays you, that nine to five, that's great. But that now that you're serious about growing your business, that nine to five is now your side hustle. And from five o'clock to one in the morning, that's when you really go to work. Okay, that's actually great advice. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Sh Shanette, can you tell everybody when it, because I really want to help get you some orders tonight. Okay. Tell everybody if they're into candles, where can they go find your candles at? Sure. So um, arielscandleshop.net. I am actually on Etsy right now. Etsy, for people who's not familiar, is a website for handcrafted business owners. And um, I wanted to start there for more uh, brand recognition before I started my own website. So you can find me there. So it's arielscandleshop.net. Can you spell Ariels? Sure. Sure. A-R-I-E-L-S-C-A-N-D-L-E. Shop, S-H-O-P, dot net. Movers, please. This is what we do. Movers supporting movers. Please go ahead over to arielscandleshop.com. Support. I don't care if you buy just one candle. This is why we have created this community. So even if even if you do nothing else, if you don't even have money to, to support her, go to her Instagram and follow her. Repost. Do something. This is how we help each other in this community. Jeanette, thanks so much. Thank I hope you. you stick around and please come back week over week. Of course. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Later. Movers, what up? Let me see what time it is. Okay, we got we got time. Let's see who else we got trying to get into the conversation. See who we got trying to get in this conversation. Who we got? I can't hey. see you, Super Dog. This Ed Hennings, man. What's up, Scott? Oh! <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good, yo. This is my brother, Ed Hennings, coming live from Milwaukee. <laughs> yo, Ed, you're making me smile, man. Happy New Year, brother. Man, Happy New Year, man. I was just listening in, man, and... Uh, you know, I always get excited when I get a chance to, to listen in, man, and, and, and get some of the moves from the power moves, man. Nah, you, this is what we do, man. Like, 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 I know, I know you, you are like minded, me and you are brothers in, in, in the way we think. And for me, having this community and being able to give back just like you are giving back. This is what does my heart joy, man. So so I know when you say you listening in and you enjoying it, I know you telling the truth. Cause this is like this is what really lifts my spirit. Yeah, no doubt, man. I'm I'm out here right now in the car. But I said, let me let me pull over and, 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 and hear what's going on, man. I, I always be trying to get in as much as I can, but I love it, man. I, I love what you're doing. Nah, thanks, and and um, because I, I definitely want to get you back on. I'm gonna call you offline because I got an idea. But real quick, just drop a gem on somebody. You know, just a, some quick motivation. Everybody starting off 2021. We just came out of a tumultuous year. You know, so many of us experienced loss in 2020. So, is there anything that you can just share with everybody in live to just in, keep encouraging them and have them really start their new year off on a high? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, I heard you say the other day about if 2020 didn't make a hustle out you, then it's probably not in you. So um, with that being said, man, just believe in yourself. Um, I think that's the strongest force that we have um, to get us started in this road of, of entrepreneurship and making our businesses a success is to believe that you can do it, that you have what it takes. And, and, and what I did for myself is what you probably can do for yourself is just like going to the gym and strengthening your body, 
you can strengthen that belief in yourself. You can see different uh, songs, different movies, whatever you do, put that around you every day that reinforces the mindset that you got what it takes. And if you just keep feeding that, feeding that, that will get so strong. Because Muhammad Ali said, I told myself was I was the greatest even before I knew it. So he was building that, building that muscle, that belief. And, 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 and a person that believes in themselves, that's, that's an unstoppable force. Can, can, can I ask you, because you just dropped a major gem, and for everybody on this live, listen to him. Like, like every day, he's saying you can build that belief in yourself. What are some of your rituals? I know what some of my rituals are every day that I do religiously. And it's all for exactly what you just said is to keep my belief up, keep me really focused and, and knowing that I can do this thing. What are some of the things that you do that maybe can help somebody else in this life? Um, what I did when I was at my lowest point and what I continue to do today is I always find examples of people that did it. I always find examples, whether it's in music, like I said, whether it's in real life. You know, I always gravitate towards the story. I use your story. I use everybody's story as my motivation to say, hey, I can do it. So I, I, I hear those stories constantly in my music, in the movies I watch, in the books I read. I'm seeking it out. I'm looking for it. I'm being very intentional about finding it every day of a story or somebody that did it. And I've been doing it so long now that it's part of my DNA. It, it, I just naturally gravitate towards that story like, oh, he lost his leg and he still became such and such. I, 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 I need that. I need that. So that's what it is. You know, one of the things that I do, and it's something we can all do, um, and you know, before I leave my house in the morning, I'm on my knees, Ed, and I'm thanking God in advance, in advance, for an incredible day that I'm about to be blessed with. Now, I don't know what's coming. That's right. I don't have no idea <laughs> on, like, like <laughs> what God is going to do for me. But it, it is something that, and I do it in the morning and before I close my eyes at night. I'm thanking God at night for the amazing day he just blessed me with. And before I walk out that door, I'm thanking him in advance for the day that, that I know is coming to me. Wow. And then everything else in between is things like you just said, the music I listen to. The, you know, I, I, I have certain um, podcasts and things that I listen to to make sure I'm constantly feeding myself that, that I can stay at a, at, at a certain level of belief in just showing and knowing I can do this thing. That's right. That's right, man. Uh, that's it, man. They say whatever beast you feed going to be the strongest. So I try to feed that beast that says I'm the beast that I can do this. I'm going to leave out this door. Like you said, man, uh, I, I got friends that's not as fortunate. You know, they might have lost their eyesight. They might have lost an arm. They, they might not be as healthy. All of these type of things that goes on. So I'm thanking God for saying, you know what? I have all you can bless me with another day first of all second of all you gave me the use of all my faculties and extremities they work pretty well so it's on me now to go out here and use these tools I got them I got that's everything right. I need so I'm out here that's right and, and, I, and I'm going to tell you before I let you go Ed and I think it's important for all of you movers out there one of the things that, that, that I live by Mind, body, spirit. And I feed that those three areas of my life every day. The mind, if I'm always taking in education, motivation, something that inspires me, I'm always feeding this thing right here. Body, working out. I know you are big on that workout. You doing all the, like, you working out like a young boy. I be seeing you on the ground, and I'm like, yo, he put me <laughs> stuff on the chain. But I see you, and I know, I know you You get your workout on. But, but also spirit. I don't care who you pray to. 
you don't have to, who you pray to is your business, but you got to stay centered and you got to stay aligned with, with, with something that is greater than you. And if you on every day feeding that mind, body, and spirit, I guarantee you will have no choice but to continue to live on a higher vibration. That's right. And 100% correct, man. You can drop the mic on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to hit you offline, brother. But thanks so much for, for jumping in. Like I said, I got to holler at you about something. All right, man. Thanks for having me, man. Movers, keep moving. <laughs> my man, be good. Be safe. Shout to my boy Ed Hennings. Please go and, 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 and follow him. Ed Hennings, H E N N I N G S. Ed Hennings out of uh, Milwaukee. We got time. I'm gonna take a couple more. But this is that Wednesday night. This is this is Wednesday night warrior mentality. We doing. This is the power move maker hour Wednesday night. We in here. We supporting one another, y'all. How you doing, sir? I'm good. Who we got? My name is Jamie Benwan. You said who? My name is Jamie Benwan from Nigeria. You from Nigeria? Yes, sir. You in Nigeria now? No, I'm in America, but I'm from Nigeria. Okay, okay. What's up, brother? I'm doing all right, sir. So Good man, know. good man. So I'm basically, I've been listening to your thing lately. And I kind of like the motivation and everything. See, I'm a person. I also like to be motivating people as well. I'm, I have that type of, you know, in me. So I've been using mm -hmm. that. And during this pandemic, I used that time of motivation. I started a podcast. It's called The Daily Prince Jemmy for those who wants to listen. So it's more like I'm a person. I like to see the new, the you to come out and experience they feeling. Because I feel like nowadays people are looking down on the youth. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we youth need to come out and use our words because our words are very powerful. So I feel like it needs to be heard. My last podcast that I used was about us youth coming out to speak on what we want to change in our society. Politics, whatever, we need to come out. We need to be leaders. I was telling a friend of mine one day, I was like, Sometimes we need younger people and politics because we are the people with new minds, new ideas of how we want the world to be a better place. So, you know, I've been doing podcasts, going around, you know, and I'm all about just keep doing what I have to do to motivate those around me. And But sometimes I just feel like giving up, but then I've always listened. I always take that idea of listening to, you know, stories of people who are in my shoes or who had same experience about something that they was about to give up. I listened to mm -hmm. it and then it gave me some type of boost and I'm like, you know what? If they had to go through this, why can't I not face it? So I go through around trying to motivate others, hoping that one day I get there to where I want to be. So I hope that one day I'm going to reach my goal to be someone who's there to motivate others. Well, here's what I would say. First and foremost, I, 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 I highly respect that you stepped up and put the request in to be on this live. It ain't easy coming on the live and, and, and sharing your thoughts, asking questions, sharing your feelings. So, you are an example of everything I want all of the movers who, who are in this live to be. Just, just I know, I know to you, you're like, yo, I just hit the request button. But you, you know that, that to, that's you got to be brave to just even hit that request button, and that's for any of you guys. Right now, it's about a request button, but out there in the world. You got to be brave enough to just take that first step, whatever that first step may be. So I applaud you and salute you for that. But even in terms of your podcast, you remind me of myself. And what I mean by that in movies, every, all of the movies, I want you all to pay close attention to this. When I started motivational speaking, 
I was very, very distressed. And I was very, very aggravated because the entire world shut down. And I couldn't get speaking dates. And I'm like, you know, I want to I wanna inspire people and I want to motivate people, not knowing that one day I would motivate yourself, motivate somebody who's from a totally other um, country. But sometimes you have to stop looking at the barriers and the roadblocks in front of you. Yes, the world was shut down and people weren't booking people to come in and do these speaking dates. So I was like, you know what? That's not going to stop me. I'm going to just go on live and I'm going to do my motivation Monday as though I'm speaking to a thousand people each week. I had no idea one day you would somehow find yourself listening to, the, to, to my little motivation, but it happened. And that's what we have to stop. Stop looking at roadblocks that are in front of us as stop signs. They're not stop signs. It's just a roadblock. It's a pause. It's a bump in the road. Figure a way around it and keep going towards your dream. So I love the fact that you said, you know, you're working for the youth and you created your podcast. And, can, and, and I want to make sure I send people to your podcast. So, um, say it again slow and just spell it out so we can all go and start listening. It's called The Daily Pins, Jemmy. I'm the daily it, who? The, it's called the Daily Prince Jemmy. If, okay, so put put it in the chat for everybody. Yeah, yeah I want to make sure we all support you. That's what this community is about. And I definitely respect and love the fact that you jumped on and just shared with us. You know, it, it, this this is what our community does. Is in the chat? Yes, sir. Okay, we all going to go, and I'll make sure I share it. Okay, my brother, I got time for one more person to jump in this live. I like to keep it for one hour. All so right, I thank, thank you. you, and I appreciate you. Keep making them power moves. Got you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. And, I, and, and, and make, sure, make sure that you back here on Monday, 7 p.m. It's the Monday Night Motivation. And Wednesday, you know we right. come in with this warrior mentality. Warrior Wednesdays. Thank you. Thank My you. My brother. Thank you. All love. All right, sir. Okay, we got, yeah, we coming down to our hour. I'm going to let one more person in and we good. I'm going to let one more person. If, if, if you've been holding, waiting to get in, I'll catch you next week. I try to keep these to an hour. Friends, what up? Who's that? It's me, Dakari. Yeah, Dakari, Dakari, you gotta let somebody else in this live. Aye, aye, aye. Next yeah, week. Just be quick, be quick. Talk, 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 talk to your fellow movers, and then I'm gonna let somebody else in, because I got a bunch of people waiting. All right, I got you, I got you. My name is Dakari Mayo, 19 CEO of Dallas Lamar. My name is 19, I'm 19 CEO of Dallas Lamar. I gotta go. My grandma. Later, Dakari. Yep. I'm gonna let one more person in, and we gonna we gonna wrap it up, y'all. Shout to all the movers out there. Okay. Who we got? Can you see me better now? I can hear you much better. I can see you a little uh, bit better too. Just, just try not to move. Okay. Oh, don't show me too. So, what education should I get in college for making music, what like is making beats? Uh, I'm sorry, brother. I can't. I can't hear you. It sounds like somebody talking in the background. Um, what education should I get for making uh, music, like in college? I don't, I don't really understand the question. Like, like what education? Like, what major should I take for making music? What major should you take in college? Okay. Like what education? Okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what 
majors are offered that teach you to to make music. Um, there are there are schools out there that that focus on that. But have you ever thought about going and interning for for a producer? Uh, no, I never thought of that. Oh yeah, mom said get out of her house. Do, 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 do you want to do you want to check back in because we can hear your background? Um, you can hear me now. I'm going outside. Okay. Can you hear me now. Yep. So just stop moving for a second. Okay. So here's here's what I would suggest. I, I, I'm a big advocate of higher learning, right? So going to school, yeah. going to school. Have you finished high school? Um. Yeah. You have finished high school? I think, yeah, I already graduated. Okay, beautiful. Where, where do you live, by the way? Palm Springs. Palm Springs? In California. Okay. Yeah. You may want to consider going and interning at a local studio. Do you Do you have a local studio out that way? Barely. In Palm Springs, there are no local studios? There are local studios, but there are hardly any. Okay. You need to find one local studio. You about what? An hour and a half, two hours from, from L.A. proper? Basically. Okay. Do you drive? Uh, my uncle drives for me. Okay, you're making this a little more difficult, but what I would suggest to you is similar to what Jermaine Dupree said earlier, if you were on, on the live at that time. You have to get close to your goal. So if you're looking to, to get some type of music education, learn how to produce beats, I would tell you to go and try to either get an entry level job or intern at a studio because that's where all the producers are going to be. That's where you're going to learn about all the different gear. That's where you're going to see what it what it takes to make a beat from start to finish. Also, <clears throat> I'm not sure if the, you know, and if you can't make it to a major studio, I'm sure that there's somebody who lives close to you who have a home setup. And one of you know, back myself, when I got into the music industry, my best friend was a DJ. And we used to go into his basement every week and I would watch him DJing and I would watch him making beats. I never had a, a, a desire to make beats. I never had a desire to DJ. But just by being around him and being in that close proximity every week, I eventually learned technical aspects of, of making records, I mean, making beats and, and spinning records. And that wasn't even something I was trying to do. So you need to get into the close vicinity of somebody who's doing what you want to do. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what majors to take in school because I'm not sure what they even offer or if they offer courses in terms of making beats. But what I can tell you is getting close to somebody who's doing it, you'll get a hands-on education that'll be invaluable for you. Okay? Right now I'm stuck with the simple stuff, just the instruments and just the recordings. That's fine. I mean, you got to start this somewhere. Because I only have like a trumpet, a guitar, and my phone for an audio recording. And I can just make beats from there. And I got a huge amp. So that's why I start with. Maybe you should look. Maybe you should look. Um, maybe you should look online and just put studios near me, music studios near me, and call them and volunteer your services. Nobody's going to turn down free labor. Trust me. So I know you are limited in the equipment and the experience that you have. But if you just punch in your phone right now, music studios near me, there's going to be a few that come up. And all you got to do is call them 
Let them know you have a desire to learn and tell them you are willing to work for no money or free. I mean, for, for free or very little money and nobody's going to turn that down and you'll be able to get a hands-on education. That's fantastic. So does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Yeah, so don't just don't just think about what you have access to right now. I heard you say you have a guitar, you have an amp, you got phone, this. Don't worry about that. There's somebody who has more than enough equipment and they need the help. So as long as you're willing to go in and help them out, nine out of 10, they'd be happy to have you, but in turn, they'd be happy to teach you in exchange for you putting in work for little to no money. Mm. That makes sense? Absolutely. <laughs> and what's your name, by the way? Malachi. Malachi, man. Continued success to you. I mean, this can be this can be a big year for you, but I want you to really take that extra step. Like, don't worry about the equipment you have right now. You don't need the equipment. Somebody has everything that you need, and they have the knowledge and the know-how and the willingness to teach you. Go to your phone. Go, go to that thing you carry around every day, all day. And all you got to do is put studio, music studio near me, and I guarantee something, 10 things are going to pop up. And all you have to do is start making calls. If you get nine no's, keep going until you get that 10th yes. Okay? Okay. Malachi, you be good. Thanks for checking in. Every Wednesday night, 7 p.m., and every Monday night, 7 p.m. Peace and blessings, brother. Mm. You too. Okay, what time is it? All right, y'all, we're going to end it here. Um, damn, I got, I got so many people waiting to get in. I'm sorry. I'll get around to y'all next week. My word. I'll get around to y'all next week. But I like to keep, the, keep this down to an hour. Every Wednesday night, 7 p.m., come in. Have your questions. If I can't answer it, I'll let somebody else jump in and answer it for you. Monday night, 7 p.m., it's our Monday night motivation. And please go ahead and, and check out the new interview that's um, out this week with the Black Wealth Renaissance. My boys Jalen and David over at Black Wealth Renaissance, they dropped so many gems that I think so many of us can benefit from. All right, I'll catch y'all next week. Continue blessings, movers. Continue blessings. Let's keep supporting one another. And I'll see y'all next Wednesday.